What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here tonight with the review for Love After Lockup Season 3 Episode 36. I don't understand why WeTV continuously does this stupid shit, but they do it every season. But you guys, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then why are we still going out on dates and you not foot the bill? Hit that notification bell button, hit that subscribe button, and without that, with that all being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get into this episode review. Like I said, season three, episode 36, the episode is titled Sugar Daddy or Boyfriend. Sugar Daddy is what it is, not a boyfriend, but let's go ahead and get into it without further ado. All right, you guys, let's start up with Stan and Lisa. Stan. Yeah, Stan, I'm gonna need you to burn like whatever that is on your head, whatever this ferret is that's on your head, I just really want you to burn that shit. Please and thank you, because it looks a hot mess on my television screen. So we also see that Stan has a cat. I'm like, oh my God, he has a cat. And it was in that moment that I realized, I'm like, oh my God, Stan is lonely. Cause he's talking about his, you know, his wife that passed away. I'm like, Stan is lonely. So then Lisa calls him and she's ready to get home and do something that is in the basement. I was like, oh, good God. I can't imagine what Stan and Lisa are doing in the bedroom, in the basement, and anywhere, ew. So then Lisa tells Stan that she wonders if he'll find her attractive because, you know, she has, she says she has, I guess she has, you know, I wonder if she looks like Cynthia from um, Rugrats. I wonder if she looks like Cynthia from Rugrats with the hair. Because she's, um, he says, you know what, baby, whatever you look like, I'll be attracted to him like you was a lie. So, before Lisa went to jail, we found out a little bit of information that we all knew that Stan and Lisa met on, um, I was about to say, Plenty of Fish. They met on Seeking Arrangements. But the thing was, they only knew each other for two days prior to her going to jail. I'm like, wait a minute. So you in love with her, but you only knew her two days prior to her going to jail? So then you guys remember Stan told us how much money was Stan worth last week? I just find it hard to believe that Stan's worth that much money with that 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 atrocity that is on his head. I know it was in the millions, right? Let's see where Stan says. He said he's worth 2.3 million, right? I just find it hard to believe that Stan is worth 2.3 million with that atrocity that is attached to his head. So he says that, you know, he doesn't know if his daughters will approve of Lisa. I can tell you your daughters are not going to approve of Lisa when they find out how old Lisa is and where you met Lisa at. They don't know that Lisa is a gold digger. Now, I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke nigga. Get down, girl. Go ahead. Get down. Get down, girl. Go ahead. Get down. Get down, girl. Go ahead. Get down. Yeah. Y'all know the song. So, yeah. Then we find out that Stan... It's only 25% of his fortune to his daughters, which I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then Lisa's also getting 25% of it. I'm like, wait a minute. If I was your daughters, I would, bu I would bust Lisa upside her head 25% and I will bust you upside your head. Why are you giving her 25%? Where are your kids? That's just a lady you just recently met. Where are your kids? Hell no. She's, I mean, she's not even equal. No, 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 no. And once again, my notice says I want Stan to burn that ferret on his head. So, Stan tells us later in the episode that Lisa has managed to keep her figure, but she lost her hair in a fight. Okay. So, Stan is going to go buy her some wigs. You need to buy yourself a new unit as well. Now, the wigs didn't look bad, I will say that. The wigs didn't look bad, but what threw me off with the wigs when that woman said that the wigs... It was three wigs he got. She said that they cost $1,300. I was like, girl, $1,300 for three wigs? Those must be some cheap-ass wigs. $1,300? Absolutely no. So then Stan goes to the bathroom. Lisa calls him, right? Because her brother, I guess, was in a high-speed chase with the cops, got arrested, he's in jail, and his bill is $30,000. So now she wants to know if Stan will either help her get him out or if he should just stay in there and wait it out. Let me tell you what your brother's gonna do if it was me, Lisa. He's gonna wait it out. She's like, oh, you know, money comes and goes. You can get that back easily. Maybe Stan can, but can you give me my $30,000 back easily? 
can your brother give me my $30,000 back easily? If the answer is N-O, then my answer is N-O as well. Girl, these people got me, yeah, these people are slow. Let us move on. All right, you guys, next, let's talk about Deontay and Nicole. Lord, Deontay and Nicole. Deontay, so y'all know he's getting ready to go pick up Nicole from prison, right? So Deontay on the ground doing some push-ups. I'm like, nah, go away with me with this, in the words of Phaedra. So yeah, so Deontay really gives me like he got some disabilities, just being honest with you guys. So, honestly, when it comes to Deontay, this, he's talking about the fact that, you know, his last girlfriend, he got played, right? I'm thinking, Deontay, do you not realize you're going to get played the same way? It's happening again, buddy. It's literally happening to you again. So, you know, he's driving to go pick up Nicole with two L's. Why is her name spelled with two L's? I don't get that. Nicole with two L's, but whatever. So, like I said, he's going to pick up, um, you know, Nicole the scammer. Yeah, something. Literally, something about him is just screaming disability. Now, I will say, when Deontay picked Nicole up from prison, he was giving me very creepy. Come on, bring that ass her. Bring that ass her. Bring that ass her. I was like, um, calm down, buddy. Go get your little torso and have fun with it. So, like I said, once again, he's dumb. So, Deontay gave Nicole that money. And she's like, oh, let me put this in my brow. Let me put this in my brow. And then he was, you know, she was, um, they were up against each other. He's like, uh-oh, damn, boy, damn, boy. I'm like, when is the last time you had sex? You know, when it comes to Deontay, I feel like he's more into her than she is into him. You guys can let me know what you guys think, but we're going to move on from him. All right, you guys. So you notice that I have the air files in. It's because I'm on my computer. I'm watching Nikki Stars live. So that's what we're doing. So next, let's move over to Courtney and Josh. Courtney in his pickle costume. Lord Courtney in his damn pickle costume. Courtney in a pickle costume. I will say she and and um and Josh are very emotional when they see each other. <laughs> now, did anybody catch this? Okay, well, look at the pictures of Josh in prison, and now look at Josh in his scene. Josh in prison. Josh, when he was in prison, he was bigger, but now he's a lot smaller. So I'm like, what the hell has happened to Josh in the, in the time that he's been in prison? Like, did you get into, Lord, please say that Josh didn't get into drugs. But whatever. So you guys know that Josh is able to leave, live with, um, with Courtney for two weeks. He's quarantined with her, right? So after he quarantines with her, he's going to go and live with his cousin. For how long? Because she's on, paro she's on probation for two years. So then we see them like, go get a fast food. They go to a fast food place and get some um, get some um, food. He says that it smells like sex. I was like, it smells like sex? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, so my computer it can hear me and it it thinks i'm talking to it and it's trying to look up what i just said about it smell like sex so listening to courtney and chris when they were i mean not courtney and chris but courtney and josh listening to them have phone sex was just ew just gonna keep it at that so he says it's been 11 years since he has sex okay ain't nothing wrong with that now, one thing I did notice, which kind of caught me for a loop, number one, Courtney's feet, her socks, they were dirty as hell. Number two, y'all got dogs. I'm like, and they started kissing in the bed. I'm like, um, I was like, um, 
I was like, um, so y'all really about to have sex with the dogs in the room with y'all? Like that. The dogs was what threw me off. The dogs. The dogs. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Rachel and Doug. Mm -mm. Rachel and Doug. Doug is an asshole. Like, ain't no easy or nice way to say it, but Doug is an asshole. And it's the way that he talks to Rachel. Like, girl, you literally sit there and listen to that. I'm sorry. If you in prison, you not about to sit here and give. You not about to sit here and call me up on the phone and go up on me and cuss me out. I'm like, no. If you want something done while you in prison, guess what? Guess who needs to do it? You, buddy. Not me. Like, the fact that he. I mean, he's just rude. And then he just gives me abusive. Like, I put in my notes, like, if I was Rachel, I wouldn't be with Doug in any capacity. Like, he, I wouldn't be with him in no capacity. So Rachel, she's meeting with her mom, right? And her mom asks her, is she ready for, she ready for Thursday? Which she says yes. So I'm assuming that Thursday is going to be Doug, Doug's release date. So then she, we, we, you know, we find out a little bit more about Miss Rachel. So Rachel was married before, right, to another con who was a heroin addict. I'm like, well, damn. You went from a heroin addict to an abusive, rude-ass convict. Okay. And my notice says, girl, you better run. Because like I said, it says here, you know, he's abusive. So then her mama asks her how much money did she spend on spend on Doug. She says around thirty thousand dollars. What the f y'all do? Like I, I don't understand that. Thirty thousand dollars. What do you like? What do y'all do? What do y'all pay? What do y'all buy? Like commissary commissary don't cost that much. I know it might be a little expensive, but it ain't that damn expensive. Thirty thousand dollars. The f hell are y'all spending? But she said hotel rooms and all this kind of stuff, girl. Where where is Josh at and where are you at? I'm sorry. Like I've said it before, I had a I had a cousin who was in prison. I had a, I have two uncles. Well, I have I had at the time I had two uncles that was in prison when I was a kid. So my mom, my grandmother, and I we would go visit my cousin who was in Huntsville, which is a little bit outside of Houston, um, Huntsville. Then we would go down to um, to visit my uncle in this place called Love Lady, Texas. Mind you, I hated going to both places because the drive was just ridiculous. Um, what was I talking about? But yeah, like, I'm not gonna travel from state to state to see somebody. I I'm sorry, it just, it just wouldn't be me. It really would not be me. Like, y'all look really foolish and and it and ignorant. I'm sorry to say you look stupid. Traveling across county lines, state lines, any lines to visit these ex these convicts would not be me. But with, when it comes to Rachel, like I said before, Rachel, girl, if you don't take off running for the border, because like I said, when it comes down to Mr. Doug right here, Mr. Doug, something's wrong with Mr. Doug. Just putting that out there on you know putting that out there to you right now. There is something wrong with Doug. Like I said, Doug gives me abusive. Doug gives me controlling. Doug gives me so many different variations of whatever you, of, of, of a nutcase. I would run. That's my suggestion to you, Rachel. Run. Run, run, run. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Brittany, right? So, Brittany, it's just a lot with Brittany. M me... He thinks Brittany protests too much about, you know, what her family got, what she got. I just really think she's putting on, you know, too much for the camera because, you know, like that eyeshadow that's on her eyes is just, it's a different color of, it's like silver-ish, metallic-ish, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot. 
Then you got the wig. The wig sits right here. It sits right here on her scalp. Then the wig is a little synthetic, so you know it it it, it looks like you know you can just take a match and whoosh, light it on fire. Then the wig sits up. So yeah, I think Brittany puts on too much. So Brittany tells us that she's getting ready to go to her dad's house, right? And he's having his birthday party. Once again, Brittany tells us that her family, she lives in a suburb outside of Houston. Hmm. I know Houston. And I'm just trying to think about what suburb, what suburb she lives in. What suburb she's saying she lives in. Suburb outside of Houston. I'm going to have to really think about that one. Because I don't, I don't believe shit Brittany's saying to be quite honest with you. Who? So when Brittany went home, her sister, I was like, well, damn. I thought Britney's wig was terrible, but that sister's wig was even terrible. Like, how do we get, how do we go from this to that? But whatever. So then she tells her family, you know, she's been in a relationship with Ray for about nine months now. And they were like, huh? Oh yeah, and he's also been in, he's also in jail. They were like, what? He's in jail? She was like, yep, he's in jail. So then they said, what is he in jail for? And she says, oh, for, you know, possession to just, you know, possession with um, intent to distribute. So you mean tell me he was a drug dealer? They were like, yes. Now see, here's the, here's the point when I knew Brittany was full of it. Now, it's nothing wrong with saying, it, it's nothing wrong with having two different, you know, multiple streams of income. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But like I said before, with Brittany, Brittany, I feel like Brittany puts on airs for this show. Brittany is actually giving Chevelle 2.0 tees. That's who she's giving me. Chevelle. So she's talking. So her mom said that she works two jobs. She has an apartment and her car. I'm like, wait a minute. But the way Brittany is talking about the, how y'all financially stable and everything, you wouldn't expect for somebody like if if Brittany is this this plush princess, like she wants to make herself out to be. Why does she have two jobs? Like, make that make sense to me. Like, if I if my parents had you know. If, if we lived in the suburbs and we had, you know, a little a little bit of money, then I wouldn't be working no two damn jobs. That's just me putting it, putting it out there like that. I would not be working two jobs. I was like, hmm, makes me wonder, is Brittany putting on airs? Because I just don't, I'm, like I said, it's just something about Brittany that I just, it, 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 it doesn't sit right with me. Really, it don't. So her family is worried about her being a, you know, her and Ray, they worried that this might be a fixer up. I'm like, well, you you right about that. I mean, this is gonna definitely be a fixer up. This is gonna be a fixer up if you ain't never if I ain't never heard of one in my life. Gotta talk about well, Brittany. You know, you like you, you like to have this. You like to have that. You like to have da 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 da. And we're just worried because he's gonna come out of out of jail and he doesn't have a job. And his only way of getting money that he knows how to get money is to go out there and hustle on the street and sell that sell drugs. And they're just worried that he's gonna do that again. You know, and they have valid concerns, so I'm gonna give them that part. I'm gonna definitely give them that they have valid concerns when it comes to that. Like, if this man knew how to get fast, easy money, then you think he's gonna come out of jail and wanna get a nine to five? Nah. So then they ask her, so when he gets out of jail, where is he going? She's like, oh, he's gonna parole to his, he's gonna parole to his dad's house, but first he has to go to a halfway house. Now, Brittany in her interview with the producers, she says, okay, so I'm lying to my family once again. I'm like, girl, <laughs> you just lied to them about not being with this man for nine months, right? So, and your mom, you can already see that your mama and your daddy and your sister are not feeling him, right? So then you're going to add insult to injury. Like your mama just said she doesn't even want to meet the dude until he can bring something to the table. Which, ma'am, I don't know when or how he's going to bring something to the table. That might never happen. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm just like, so your mama just said she don't want to meet this man unless he bring, unless he can bring something to the table. He, I mean, he damn sure ain't bringing nothing to the table when he get out of a prison, and he's coming to live at your house. How you gonna play that? So like, what if your sister or anybody in your family want to come visit you, and Ray is at the house? What, what you gonna say? Oh, he came to visit. Cause I know what well, I mean. I know felons can do that. Cause I, like I said, like I said before, 
I have family members who've been in, in the prison system, so I know you can go visit people, but it's, I mean, it's not immediately. It's not like right when you get out of jail. You have to, it has to take some, that's months in advance. That's like months down the line where you can start going to visit people or potentially spending a night with them. Girl, Brittany, you really didn't think this shit through, did you? Mm. Brittany and her terrible wig. Lord, these people gonna give us a run for our money this season. I can tell you that. These people gonna give us a run for our money. On a time of a time, you got Stan with that terrible wig and that terrible ferret on his head, getting played by Lisa. You got Deontay and Nicole. Who? This is gonna be a fun season. I can, I really can tell you that this is gonna be a fun, fun, fun season. But you guys, that's it. Be sure to like this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else and share this video. And until the next one, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands. Please wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys choose to do, be blessed and um, be safe and socially distance. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye, guys. Well, I guess this doesn't want to turn itself off, but...